Hello everybody, Oshale here and welcome back to Oshi Reads and Happy New Year! We are finally in 2021. I'm currently sitting here, we are eight days into the new year and um, I want my money back. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Welcome to my second attempt at a no buy year. I will post the no buy year video I did last year right now. And uh, before I go into my plans for my redo of my no buy year, first I'm gonna talk to you about why I need a redo of a no buy year. So I had all the plans in the world to do a no buy year for 2020. I made a video about it, I talked to y'all, I told y'all my plans, the rules that I had set for myself, my parameters, my boundaries, everything was going well, I was in great spirits, I was making great strides, and then March hit. And then the pandemic and quarantine. And I just spiraled y'all, I emotionally spiraled and buying things became my solace and I completely spiraled out of control with the book buying. I completely spiraled out of control with the eating out. A part of me felt like I needed to support my local restaurants because I didn't want my favorite places to close down. A lot of it was also depression and I really couldn't bring myself to sometimes get out of bed or even make a meal for myself at times. And so I spent astronomical amounts of money on self-soothing with retail therapy and eating out and just whatever my heart desired I just I just bought it because I was such in a place of mental and emotional turmoil for so much of quarantine and of 2020 that I just could not bring myself to restrict myself I felt you know complete just a loss of control you know I went into 2020 having all of this peace and calm and feeling completely disgusted with my buying habits and really wanting to revamp things and really wanting to forge a new path for myself and kind of form new habits and form new mental snapses you know like your brain has these like mental pathways that connect to your habits and the things that you do and I was trying to rewire my mind to not always go to retail therapy when things aren't going well and I just couldn't bring myself to really complete that mission in 2020 with everything else that was going on and so now that we are in 2021 I am in a completely different emotional place I actually did not even watch last year's video because I didn't want it to influence this video right now I just wanted to speak to y'all from such a genuine place of the present and where I am right now emotionally and mentally and I have to be honest with you all I am not in a good place right now in the sense of retail therapy uh, I have no self-control at the moment in fact I just purchased something today that was a large purchase and I just I don't have self-control I don't have self-control my self-control has completely left the building and I don't have that desire like I did at the beginning of 2020 to curtail myself. I don't have I don't have that desire to um, to change my habits. So I'm starting this no buy year from a completely different place, and I'm literally starting this no buy year from a place of not knowing how I'm going to do this. And last year I felt so confident, so strong. I was just mentally, emotionally ready for a change. I was, I, you know, and I had been doing the no buy thing since late 2019. So I was already in my stride. I, you know, things were going well. I was being, you know, conscientious of my habits and, you know, I was having success. And so I'm coming into this no buy year, like I, I just bought something today. I bought coffee every single day this week. Um, I ate out last night. <laughs> I got takeout um yeah yeah so I just want to talk about the things that I want to try to accomplish with this no buy year this year um, I will say that last year I started my no buy year like around October or November of 2019 so by the time quarantine and the pandemic really hit its stride in March I'd already been practicing uh, you know not purchasing things I'd already been practicing and being successful at not buying things for quite a few months and you know one of the perks of that is that I had a very 
large amount of savings going into quarantine. And so I didn't have that same fear that a lot of people had, even when I got laid off of my job and you know i had to go on unemployment and you know unemployment is not much i mean thankfully they came in the government came in at that time with the extra 600 dollars a week and that really helped me but i had a sense of peace and calm because i had so much money saved from just practicing no buy from like november 2019 up until you know end of february mid-march 2020 and that is the reason why i am forging ahead you know i could have just said you know what I'm not in a place to do a no buy. I have no self control right now. I will just, you know, shelve it until 2022. But that security of having those savings is just something that I need again, especially as we are in such uncertain times. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. And thankfully, I have gone back to work and I found a better job. But I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know if we're going to end up in another quarantine because. The cases are trending so high right now nationwide I don't know what's going to happen and I want to have that peace of mind I want to have that security blanket that comes with having money in the bank there are so many of us who have lost so much some of us have lost not only our livelihoods our businesses our homes family members and you know there's so little that's in our control and that's another reason why I'm pushing forward with this no buy year because this is something I can control. I can control myself or at least attempt to and I can control my buying habits and I can control, you know, what I choose to do with my money. And, you know, in a world that is so chaotic right now and in such uncertain times, that's just something that I want to hold on to. And that's just something that I want to lean into in 2021. So I say all that to say, I don't have any explicit rules and boundaries. What I would like to do is I would like to start eating in more and doing takeout less and getting, you know, delivery less. So in 2020, I spent a lot of money with Uber Eats and, and uh, what are the other ones? All, you know, y'all you, know all the other ones, Postmates and all of them i spent so much money and like i said i try to justify it by saying oh i'm supporting my local restaurants i don't want them to close but the reality of it is i was you know i was i was in a place of turmoil i i i couldn't even bring myself to cook half the time i had so much anxiety i it was just so much easier to just order something and have it delivered to my door so i want to try to eat in more i eat out less so that's rule number one is to get back into a place of honestly y'all i'm not even gonna say absolutely no takeout i'm just gonna say if i only do takeout once a week i'm gonna count that as a win and this thing that i'm doing now where i buy coffee every single morning there is a coffee shop right next door to where i work and it's very convenient to sleep in that extra 20 minutes that it would take to make coffee at home and just say oh i'll just get coffee when i get to work and that to me is unacceptable because I have so much coffee at my house. I have a French press. I actually like the coffee that I make at home. And this is just out of pure laziness and just pure uh, poor time management, procrastination, not wanting to get up at a time that would allot me enough time to do it. And so to me, that's unacceptable and that has to change. So I want to only bring coffee in myself i want to bring in my own coffee to work and stop spending four to five dollars a day on getting coffee because it adds up and before you know it that's like what thirty dollars a week what a hundred and uh twenty dollars a month on coffee you know and that doesn't even take into account the times that i go to starbucks so this is just not acceptable anymore <laughs> i'm cutting out the coffee and i am going to oh <laughs> going to implement some more self-control where that is concerned the dogs hear someone okay so another thing that has gotten out of control is the book buying and i will say that book buying has completely slowed down and i know that i am just in a place of of stillness now with my book buying because the holidays happened and i didn't really buy too many books i did buy some romance novels on my kindle but that was about it. And during the pandemic and during quarantine, I spent so much money on books. It was insane. It was insane. I had 
no self-control whatsoever. I saw a pretty book, a pretty cover, a book I wanted, and I just hit buy. No thoughts about it, no hold barred. And I'm now in a place where, like I said, the holidays happened and so many retailers had sales and coupons and things of that nature. And I didn't take advantage of any of it. I even would fill up my cart and then I just would never hit buy. So I think I'm in a good place now. <laughs> So with my book buying, I would just say that I'm really looking uh, to read the books that I've purchased and this is very much how I was feeling in the beginning of 2020 and you know back then I think I had a rule of like oh read 10 books buy one. I'm not going to give myself a rule for this, I'm just going to say that I really want to look on my shelves and feel the satisfaction of knowing that I've read a lot of the books on there. Um, I'm looking to streamline my collection and have a mix of books I'm really really looking forward to reading and books that I've read and that I love and anything else that falls outside of that I think I will be unhauling and donating to my local library giving away to friends uh, and uh, perhaps even selling on Depop things of that nature so that's how I feel about the book buying when it comes to household items, uh, last year I kind of had a rule because I was still furnishing my apartment, I was still buying a lot of things and <laughs> my apartment has come a long way and I think I'm in a good place right now so there's not too much more that I need so I'm not going to restrict myself in that way but I'm going to use common sense, you know, if there's something that I don't really need then I'm not going to buy it. If it's for a frivolous reason if it's not a necessity then I'm not gonna buy it I'm only going to be purchasing necessities when it comes to household items house you know decor and things of that nature uh, I don't like clutter anyway so little knickknacks and things like that I don't like now if it's something to help me be more organized or uh, right now I'm finishing up my study office area so there are still a few things that I would like for that but I have really paced myself with that and I'm only allowing myself to buy like one thing a month uh, for my office area and I'm completely satisfied with that decision. And another place why I spend money a lot is um, online. I really think there is this connection between social media and overconsumption of social media across all the different platforms. TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. There's so much scrolling that takes place, there's so much information that's hitting you all at once, that I found that a lot of times I find myself buying things simply because there was a really, really good ad on Instagram that I could not resist. And before I know it, I've gone to the page, I've hit the link in the bio, and now I'm at the website, and now I'm putting my payment information in, and now I'm buying it. And it's just like, how did I get here? <laughs> Did I really need that Starry Night Galaxy? Well, I, I love mine, so yes, I did need that. But, you know, the Galaxy projector. So, I have cut back on my social media. I don't know if y'all have noticed, if you follow me on my bookstagram, you've noticed that I don't really post as much as I used to. I was posting every day there for a while. And then I just got to a place where I became really dis disheartened by my level of you know participation on social media because it was becoming too much and that was one of my 2020 goals was to cut back on my social media usage and with the pandemic you know just being indoors and being quarantined and being so uncertain social media was a way to connect with the world to connect with friends and family and so I do give myself grace there because it was a coping mechanism literally for the entire world and it was our way of communicating with one another and our source of entertainment, our source of stress relief, our source of connection and networking and so many other things, you know? And so I'm back in a place now where I'm ready to pull back on my scrolling, on my social media usage across all the different platforms I use, mainly Instagram and really just Instagram. So. I find that my Instagram usage really heightened my purchasing of random stuff that I didn't really need. <laughs> and so that is part of my no buy rule is, you know, I have been really, really careful about how much I go on social media. 
and I haven't deleted the apps from my phone or anything, but I'm just very, very aware of how much time I spend on each app. And I'll even go days without going on Instagram, which is so nice. It feels so freeing. It feels, it, you know, it's like an awareness. I get to live in the real world and enjoy my real life. And I'm not always distracted by what's going on on Instagram. So that's been nice. And I think it's really helped me not to buy certain things and not to see that sale that's going on or that influencer that I like that finally came out with their line of lip stains or, you know, deep conditioner or whatever it might be. So that has been really helpful. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really want to work on. Sorry if you hear the dogs, you know, how they do. Welcome to Oshi Reads, right? Boys! Filming a video. They don't care. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I have, once again, taking those steps. I've deleted my Starbucks app on my phone. Although I have really cut back on Starbucks. Uh, even in just in 2020, I just, for a long time, we couldn't even go out. So I think that broke the habit. And it didn't make sense to pay an astronomical amount of money to get Starbucks delivered. It just wasn't worth it. Um, but yes, so I've deleted my Starbucks app. Oh, I deleted my Amazon app, you guys, because I noticed that I was just impulsively buying things, you know? The Amazon app is very dangerous, and all you have to do is just swipe, and it's just, it's on, it's on its way. And I have Prime, which is two-day shipping. Um, I will say that I utilize Amazon a lot to have my groceries delivered because with Amazon Fresh and or Whole Foods, uh, you can get your groceries delivered to your door. And I'm still using that feature because I don't go to the grocery store. I'm terrified to go to the grocery store and I don't feel any type of qualms admitting that to y'all. It's just one step further I've taken in protecting myself during this time. I don't go to the store unless I absolutely have to. I don't go to the grocery store at all. If I do have to go to a store, I pick a store where they're going to bring whatever it is I've purchased out to my car or I can go straight to a pickup area where we're all social distanced and wearing masks. I'm not having to interact with too many people and I can pick up whatever it is I've purchased. That is how I've been living. If it is something where I have to go into a store and spend uh, an, inordinate, an, an inordinate amount of time just wandering aisles and things of that nature, I just, I just don't go. So... You know, that's just a precaution that I've taken. That's what makes me feel the safest, uh, especially with my job. I do work in the healthcare industry at this time and I do see a large amount of people daily and we do have really stringent, uh, just very strict protocols in place about our health and safety. So I do feel safe at work, but I just don't want to take that extra chance of, you know, having that level of interaction with the public uh, for eight plus hours a day and then also exposing myself needlessly just because I had to get toothpaste, you know? So I deleted the Amazon app and I feel free. I feel good about it. I feel great. Um, I'm going to delete the YouTube app because this falls under social media. Uh, YouTube can also lead to me buying things unnecessarily if I see someone reviewing a product or, you know, something that I've been eyeing for a while watching you know one of my favorite beauty influencers or any type of influencer that i enjoy their channel really enjoy the product will then lead me to buying it because a lot of times they'll have the link in the description box and there you go slippery slope so i will be deleting i haven't deleted it yet as of right now but i will be deleting the youtube app from my phone as well and i also just don't like how much time i spend on youtube watching videos i never thought i would say this but it's the truth and it's just, it takes up a lot of my time and I want to spend my time more wisely in 2021 and conserve my energies for creating things and doing my own thing, you know? And so I just have noticed that I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos that aren't necessarily edifying or educational. So, and that's because the YouTube app is on my phone. So whenever I'm bored, I'm more likely to click on YouTube than I am on Instagram and it's still social media and it's still overconsumption of something that's not really necessary. And so 
I want to save YouTube for, I'm on my laptop, I am going to YouTube, I am going to watch. And because it's not as convenient, I don't see myself watching as much YouTube because it's not going to be on my phone. It's not something that I can just put on as on my way to work or during my break or throughout the day or when I'm walking my dog. It's not convenient. So it's something where I'll have to go out of my way, go into my, my laptop, go onto the browser, and that way it's it makes it a lot harder to consume content mindlessly. So, which also is connected to shopping habits, so it's a win-win. So this video is getting a little long. Uh, if there is anything that you want to ask me about in terms of just purchasing, uh, you know, the what's the word I'm looking for? Categories of purchasing. I've talked about social media and how that's connected to, you know, shopping habits and buying things needlessly that you don't really need. I have talked about deleting certain apps from my phone in order to curtail those habits. I've talked about really, really, really cutting back on eating out because y'all, I spent thousands of dollars in 2020 on takeout and I just, I can't, I can't do it again. Um, and I've talked about not getting coffee from next door. Um, I don't really buy clothes because I have a uniform that I wear to work. We wear scrubs. So mm, I don't go anywhere else because COVID-19. So uh, buying clothes and shoes is not an issue. Uh, hair products. So that was one of the things is I wanted to really cut back on buying hair products and hair tools and things of that nature. <laughs> that did not work because quarantine hit and I couldn't go get my hair done. And so I had to buy all these hair products and I had to really learn how to do my hair myself. And now though, I have a lot of what I need. And so I don't really want to buy too many more hair products. I want to use up what I have. I've also spent money on hair tools in 2020, which I really didn't want to do. Um, and I just don't think I need any more hair tools. So at the very bare minimum, I will not be purchasing any hair tools in 2021. Um, there are these curlers I really want. I'm holding off on them because I have curlers right now that I don't really use. And so my reasoning is at least try to use the curlers I have to see if they work for me and try to use them at least four to five times. And if I still want to purchase the new ones after using the ones I've had forever, four to five times, then I will figure out a way to give those away uh, and then I'll purchase the new one. So I'm not just like collecting things, you know, um, same thing when it comes to hair tools. I don't really need any more hair tools. Uh, I think I've gotten it down with what I need and the actual products like shampoo, conditioner, etc. There are certain things that I'm going to need to repurchase, but I will when they're finished. So that's kind of how I'm going with that. You know, when it's finished, I will buy another one. When it comes to electronics, I've made a big electronic purchase today. But to be fair, I really wasn't posting a lot in 2020, uh, mental health aside, because my computer was crashing and I was having a lot of computer issues. And so it wasn't a frivolous purchase. I really do want to try to get back to giving all the content that you deserve in 2021. And so to do that, I need to be able to edit and post. So, but when it comes to other electronics, I really don't think I need too much more. Um, I do want to upgrade my camera at some point. I want to get better audio. That's one of my goals for 2021 is having better audio on this channel. And that means being able to invest in a microphone that is going to work with the camera that I have since I'm not going to be purchasing a new camera. I think that one's still up in the air because if I get an opportunity where I have a lot saved and I feel comfortable and my personal goals in terms of me being more entrepreneurial take off, I will talk about that in another video. And I have the funds to purchase a much better camera which will allow for much better audio, I might take those steps for the betterment of this channel. So that is to be continued, uh, to be announced. Uh, we are going to leave that open for right now and I think that's it we talked about clothes food we talked about hair electronics I'm so proud I still have my iPhone 8 plus 
despite being really tempted to get the, what is it, 12 Pro when it came out this past fall, but I held off because my A plus is paid off and there's nothing wrong with it. It's not glitching, it has no issues, it's perfectly fine and I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna keep it because it's paid off and I don't really need a new phone. I'm so proud of myself because if this was me two to three years ago, I would have gotten the new iPhone. But yes, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've left out. If you have any questions about, again, any other criteria slash, um, you know, area of purchasing, please leave those in the comments. Let me know if you attempted a no-buy year last year, how that went, if it went at all due to, I don't know, the state of the world, and if you will be attempting a no-buy this year. And I look forward to talking to y'all in my next video. Mwah!